Okay, let's make some Korean braised tuna. So I'm going to be using the collar. I'm going to clean it up using a very sharp knife. I'm just going to get a lot of this little odds and ends, like a little bit of this like liver and you know just anything that's undesirable I'm gonna trim it up and we're gonna put it in a pot of um, salted boiling water all right I've processed um, my tuna collars this is everything I got out of it and here are my beautiful tuna collars all cleaned up I also have a couple of more pieces of tuna on here now I'm going to add um, cool water with a little salt and I'm going to cook it. I'll let you know approximately how long the cooking process is going to be. I'm thinking it's going to take between um, 15 to 20 minutes. Doesn't that look pretty? Yes. The bone pieces are for mama and that's me. Okay, here we go braised Korean tuna stew. So I've added just enough water to cover, barely. It's okay if some parts are not completely covered and then I'm adding about a, a teaspoon of salt. And that's it. Off to the heat. Okay, now it's drained. Um, it is rinsed and you see how nice and clean it is. Uh, the tuna looks beautifully poached inside. It is going to be still raw. You see, it's just gently all that particulate that was floating around. Uh, we want to remove. That's just beautifully tender and perfect for our fresh tuna um, Korean stew. And this is the water, just to remind you guys of what, what it looked like um, after I took out the tuna. So I didn't just pour it out into the colander. I gently picked up the pieces, put them in the colander and rinsed them. Sorry, that's my uh, foggy thing happening here. All right, let's proceed to making our stew. So admittedly, the day has gone by. I will leave all the measurements, at least the ones that I took of all my ingredients for this recipe. Here's my Korean radish, my onion, my Korean um, green pepper, my gochujang, my miso, ginger, garlic, this little pouch guy, my fresh tuna and my kimchi, and I might add a couple of other ingredients. I'm, I'm for sure gonna add sesame oil. Um, sorry, that's my loud dryer going off. And I have my tofu and I have my um, tuna collars. But let's get on with this recipe. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my onion and my um, Korean green chili. Now, if you don't have this, you could add jalapeno. Um, rare seeds or heirloom seeds has a, a variety now called 
not a pinyo, I think, and it's not as spicy. So the thing about these kinds of stews is they do need some kind of capsicum, um, you know, preferably not as spicy unless you really want it spicy. Um, if you feel like you do want the, you know, jalapeno or whatever that green capsicum is, then I would suggest if it's too spicy, what sometimes I do is I cut them in half and I salt them and soak them in water and that reduces their heat and then I would just proceed to dry them and saute them like this. This is very optional. And a lot of times you see the, um, the stews. God, this, this noise is so irritating. Hold on, let me pause. I'm back. All right, so a lot of times you see these kinds of stews with a delicate meat like tuna or fish and they cut the onion in really big chunks. Um, I don't necessarily think it works. It's best to just cut them smaller like this so they just sort of melt in and they're not so big. Now, of course, that's preference, but just to match the texture of the fish, I like to cut like the onion smaller. If you had um, shallots, of course, just a small dice. And the reason I cut the pepper a little bit bigger is in case anybody wants to pluck them out. They're not as big. Of course, they're you know flavorful and good. They're not too spicy, but it gives you an option. If you decided to use a um, bell pepper or green capsicum, um, you know, you will change the flavor, but I think it could still work. I would just reduce the amount and um, maybe, you know, pull it out unless you just particularly want to eat it. It's not going to give you the exact same flavor profile, obviously, but I think you still need it. It would be preferable to not using any. All right, smelling good. I'm just going to let this cook until it's translucent. Okay, I have something coming out of the oven. I'm going to take a quick pause, get that out, and then I'll be back. But I'm going to let this continue to cook. I'm going to turn the heat down. It was at high. I'm going to turn it down to low. Okay, I've added my um, fresh ginger and garlic. Still at a very low heat. I want this to really tenderize, not brown. If I needed to, I could just add a little water to continue to cook it through. It is going to um, continue cooking, obviously, because it's going to be a stew. But I want to make sure this process is like well established. That makes sense. The onions are getting translucent. This is all very small. It smells wonderful, just adding that garlic and ginger. It smells very fragrant. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the kochugaru, which is the Korean pepper paste, and the miso. The miso is definitely um, optional, but I think the miso with the, the tuna, the fresh tuna, is just going to just give it that really rich flavor. Sorry about the lighting. I think I'm shading myself. I didn't have the tofu, unfortunately, this morning, so that's why I didn't finish the recipe when I had better light. But it doesn't matter. What matters is the method. All a recipe is, is a guide.
Okay, the next thing that's gonna go in is the kimchi and water in that little like pouch. Inside the pouch, there's dried anchovies, um, kelp, I think a little shrimp. Uh, I don't think there's anything else in there, but it's, I'm gonna just keep it in here very briefly, maybe not even five minutes. Okay, I put my very well fermented kimchi in here and I put my um, Korean radish in here. You could substitute daikon. All of this has to cook and, you know, be right, married together in flavor and texture because once you put the tuna in, really just uh, combining flavors. That's one of the problems with like a tuna, like a tuna type Korean stew is that, or, you know, pancake, a lot of times if you make it with a canned tuna, it's just going to take like, taste like mush. So we want to conserve the integrity of the tuna. We want to make sure that all of this is nice and tender before we even consider adding the tuna. All right, I'm gonna let this kind of reduce a little bit. I'm gonna let some of that kimchi juice cook. It's 729, so I'm gonna check it in five minutes before I add the hot water and then I'm gonna let this process stew a bit. Okay, it's been five minutes exactly on very low heat. You see it hasn't um, like evaporated too much. I'm gonna add the water. I think I'm gonna add two cups of water, hot spring water to start with, and then I'll see if it needs more. I think I'm gonna end up adding closer to three cups, but we shall see. Okay, here's two cups of hot spring water. Okay, just looking at it, I think I'm gonna end up doing three cups because I want these radishes are still really hard and all these peppers and the kimchi and everything, I want that to cook down. So I'm gonna add one more cup. It's gonna be a total of three cups. Final answer, maybe not, but for now, final answer. I'm gonna add one more cup of water and then I'm gonna add that little fish seasoning packet. My phone died. All right, so I added that extra cup of water and then this little pouch. I'm literally just gonna let this pouch sit in here. Like I said before, it has a little dried anchovy, a little kelp. It's completely unnecessary. Don't let this little guy sit in here more than five minutes. There's not a lot of liquid in here and I don't want there to be, but I do want these guys to cook. So I'm gonna set a timer on my phone for exactly five minutes. It can seem like a waste because it's just really going to give this a really light flavoring and um, that's all we want. Okay, it's been exactly five minutes. This little pouch comes out. It smells so delicious in here. This is gonna taste yummy. All right, I'm gonna cover it and I'm gonna set my timer for 20 minutes to make sure that my radish is cooked and then I'm gonna add the tuna. Okay, correction. <laughs> First, I'm gonna add the tofu. So I'm adding one block of tofu. Um, I like to, I would have liked to season this ahead of time. So I'm just gonna baste it a little bit in here. This is firm tofu. 
me and my husband always have the debate what firmness that's you know up to you the firmness you'd want for something like this but it's gonna add the tofu and then I'm gonna cover set my timer for 20 minutes doesn't that just look scrumptious already set my timer for 20 minutes and then at 20 minutes I'm gonna add a little bit of um, Korean red pepper powder okay it's been exactly 20 minutes I'm gonna check my radish it feels perfect I mean if you you keep cooking it it's like a potato and my tofu looks wonderful okay time to add the tuna the star of the show okay tuna collars in tuna collars all right I think the the better thing would have been to broil these collars with a little sesame oil and get them all crisped up and added to it but unfortunately I'm not doing that but that's an option and that's a wonderful option just like how they do in Japan, you know, get them all crisped up. It's super fatty and delicious. Um, but now you're going to see this tuna collar going in. It's still very raw. I'm going to let this cook for maybe... Um, really, it's just kind of... I don't want to say heating through. It is a cook because it's raw and i am trying to get it to a state of cookedness cookingness look at that it's just perfectly it's not too far i'm going to i'm going to put the cover back on and i'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes and then i'm going to check it and if all is well i'm going to add the rest of the tuna I already have some white rice ready for this beauty. Oh shoot, I forgot. I forgot the next step. Hold on. Okay, I've added um, Korean red pepper powder, gochugaru. If you can't buy gochugaru, I would say add cayenne pepper. Some of the other chili powders uh, may add a flavor that may be changing. I mean, even if, 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 even if you did add any other chili, it's gonna change the flavor from what it's supposed to be. But I think cayenne is gonna add the amount of heat. Um, this is not as spicy and it has like a clean sort of a heat without adding too much flavor, if that makes sense. Like not like a guajillo chili or a poblado pepper or some of the other peppers that we have available. Um, you can omit it entirely. Um, I think it works really well with the tuna. It helps to cut some of that fishy flavor and it's just beautiful. It makes it nice and red. It's gorgeous and it tastes amazing. Again, everything in a recipe is optional, but I think this is a pretty important one. And if, like I said, if I had to substitute it, could you add paprika and a little cayenne maybe? I mean, maybe just the cayenne, a little paprika for color. I haven't played around with that recipe because I have access to the exact thing that I need, but just a thought. Look at this beauty. Um, I think overall I'm probably going to add about a heaping teaspoon or two teaspoons at the most of the pepper powder. But enter at your own risk. Okay, it's been about 13 minutes. And my tuna collar is looking lovely. Mm. It smells so good in my house right now. I don't think I'm quite ready to add um, 
the fish and obviously the tuna collar is fish but it's still not exactly where I want it to be just trust me on this one this is a huge collar it's not like a small collar I would suspect that this collar let's weigh it no need to guess I have a scale 258 grams of collar so times two so let's say about what 600 or so grams of um, tuna collar so they're they're quite substantial um, I'm gonna let them just cook in this broth because I am gonna remove them I don't want all this bone in there and tomorrow I'm not gonna completely eat this tonight but tomorrow I am gonna eat some um, but tomorrow when I eat it I'm gonna debone this because I don't want um, all this bone but I do want some of that flavor from the bone and that collar that fatty delicious meat so all right back to the pot back to the pot <laughs> Okay, well now that we know that this tuna collar is just about 300 grams, so you see that those minutes weren't as... So, you know, it, like we have to just let it cook a tiny little bit more before I add that boneless tuna. And um, I'm gonna give this another five minutes, I think. You see the, the meat is shrinking off the bone here. I have to be really careful because I don't want any of the, the bone to go in like something like this. I don't know if this, if this is meat or not. I have to check it. Let me check it now. No, nope, that's meat. Okay, you go back in. Sorry, buddies. Okay, but I don't, I just took out, like, when I when I measured it, I had a little bit. Yeah, this is just meat. So that's a good sign. That's what I want. I kind of want the meat to pull apart from the collar like this. It's getting there. I'm going to cover it. I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. And that's going to be it, whether it likes it or not. I wish you were here. This really smells delightful. All right, five minutes. I'm gonna call it good. Let me just do this last little thing. Get my last bit of flavors out of this. I'm gonna pull these bones out and I'm gonna put the, the rest of the tuna in. Okay, I just took out the, um, the boned tuna. I had a little bit more of the chili paste. Look at these beauties. Okay, let me give it a, I got a little tasting spoon here. Let me give it a taste for salt. Mmm. Oh boy. This is so wonderful. It does need salt. I'm gonna add um, about a teaspoon of salt right now. And I might need to correct the salt, but the that fermented kimchi, the radish, the ginger, all that layering, that tuna collar broth. This is the real. Korean tuna stew, what should, what should we call it? This is how it was intended to be. Not overcooked, not mushy, not a bunch of um, just, I mean, yeah, in a pinch. Look, this is gonna fall apart shortly, but this is still beautiful. 
you know, raw tuna. Of course, we can't always have, get access to fresh tuna like this. But when you can, you do. Wait. Tuna bone slash scale. I'm going to pull this out. I could just feel it on my spoon. I'm gonna pull this baby out. Okay, into this pan and little plate it goes. So I'm gonna let this kind of just sit. This will cool off while I'm cooking the the rest of the stew. I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna set my timer for exactly 10 minutes. You know me, I'm always adding something. So I added that teaspoon of uh, salt and I'm going to add about a teaspoon of um, sesame oil. This smells so luscious. It's so luscious. Now I'm going to cover it. It is pretty spicy. Mm. That sesame oil just adds so much aroma. All right, time to cover. Five minutes exactly. Okay, kind of just open it up. The pieces were really big. If you wanted to add more pepper powder, now is the time. I still haven't reintroduced the collar meat. But the stove is off now and it's all just sitting in its perfection. I'm gonna let it come to like at least a little bit around room temperature. It's really hot now. I'm going to introduce the collar back to it. And then we're gonna reheat it tomorrow. All right, sorry for the background noise. It's my dryer going, but um, this is the, the collarbone meat and this is all I was able to pull out of it. I'll measure it really quickly, but it's a lot. And um, that's why I didn't want this to go into the stew. I'm gonna reintroduce the, the collar meat, but a lot of this is like bone, sinew, and weird, weird stuff. Let's measure it and see what our yield was. Okay, so not including the bag, I didn't scale it out. So 168 grams, approximately after about, you know, let's say a little under 700 grams of bone. But we definitely don't want this. Look at all this. It looks yummy, but it's not. This just added flavor and richness to our broth, but we definitely don't want it. So that's it. It came down to 168 grams of collarbone meat, which is beautiful, by the way. So tender, I'm going to add it to the stock, I mean to the stew now. All right, I turned off the 
the um, the dryer. Okay, so now I've re-added the collar meat. This is just, oh, I can't wait. Can tomorrow come early? This is gonna sit overnight. Of course, you could serve it the same day. Um, but it's past 10 p.m. where I'm at. In Los Angeles, I made my husband like the most delicious Cubano sandwich for dinner. I'm gonna make him some um, tuna, some raw tuna for tomorrow. That's my next project. But tomorrow we are gonna enjoy this thoroughly. And I have some white rice. I might enjoy some tonight. I added a little bit extra um, pepper powder. At this point, feel free to add a little pinch of sugar or um, MSG or whatever. Whatever suits your fancy at this point. Night, night. See you in the morning. Okay, this is what the stew looks like the next day. You see it's absorbed a lot of liquid. So I'm gonna add an additional cup of water. And I'm gonna let it heat through. It's still ice cold right now. I don't have to be that gentle with the tuna. It's holding its shape nicely. And then what I have is some um, small diced jalapeno and some small diced um, green onion or scallion, I guess. All right, that's it. I'm gonna let it come to heat and let it simmer for a few minutes. And then we're gonna put the jalapeno and the green onion. And then we'll see where we're at with salt and everything. So it came to um, just a rolling boil for a few minutes and I turned it off. I added an additional, like a little pinch of uh, black pepper, maybe about an eighth teaspoon of salt. I already have this prepped. Uh, the green onions and the jalapeno, I had it prepped since last night. That's just gonna brighten this whole dish and give it that extra bit of, um, you know, green onion flavor. And then I think my final ingredient is going to be about a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil. Well, all the sesame oil I've used is toasted. Okay, super hot. I'm gonna let this hang out. The last thing left to do is heat it up. And the last thing I wanted to say about um, the tuna is one shout out to um, Jeff Smith. He's the fisherman who was gracious enough to gift us all this beautiful tuna. I love fishermen. What an amazing like skill and life practice. Um, and secondly is that overnight marination process is very important, I think, because the tuna is kind of acting as a mackerel, like it's very dense and flavorful and it can have a lot of texture. So I think just having it in that delicious cooking broth all night and then bringing it up to heat is gonna provide you with the most um, 
satisfactory product. I mean, it's gonna be delicious because now that tuna that has a tendency to be, tendency to be dry when braised now gets to resaturate itself with all that delicious kimchi and radish and ginger and garlic and all the flavors we built. All right, that's what all I had left to say. Well, there she is in her perfection. The radish, the tofu, everything we saw. Let's see what my husband thinks. All right, what are your final thoughts? Fantastic, 100%. Great What's piece the best of fish, like, like, like eating the fish like this, like, mm. Swishing around in my mouth. I have bad news. We're out of kimchi. Emergency. All right, well, that's it. Tell Jeff, thanks for the fish. Mm. It was thanks, amazing. Jeff. Yep.